Oh my god. She's so drunk. Those who don't appreciate life do not deserve life. Hello and welcome to Cheers to Fears, where we take horror films and make them into drinking games. We're your two hosts, I'm Alex. And I'm Tucker. Today we'll be taking a close look into Sinister, written and directed by Scott Derrickson, who also wrote and directed The Exorcism of Emily Rose and Doctor Strange. Just a fair warning, there may be spoilers ahead, so if you have not seen Sinister and want to, consider watching it first before this video. If spoilers are not an issue for you, let's get right into it. Sinister opens with old footage playing of a family being hung in a tree. We then shortly thereafter cut to a washed up crime writer named Ellison Oswald moving into the house where these grisly murders took place, and bringing his unwitting family along with him. While unpacking, he discovers a box of Super 8 film reels in the attic, containing not only the hanging shown in the opening, but also several other scenes of families being murdered across the country, dating all the way back to the 1960s. In a constant struggle between fame and his family's well-being, Ellison must choose which is more important to him. Now that we know the brief story of what takes place in Sinister, Let's look at the rules. Let's start off with the common horror movie tropes. The first rule is death. Anytime someone is shown dying, or death is implied, you must take a drink. In total, there are 20 deaths in Sinister, which is more than double from our previous episode, Dead Silence. Some of the deaths are in your face, while others are some that can easily be missed. So it's best to keep your eyes on the screen and your hand on the drink. On to our next rule which is any time a character screams, cries, or yells. Go! Surprisingly, there is only 16 instances that we accounted where this occurs, which is quite low for a horror movie. The final rule involving horror tropes is any time you say- Bagul, get the fuck out of here. Go back to your Slipknot cover band. As we were saying, any time a jump scare occurs, take a drink. And for Sinister, that resulted in 11 drinks. At this point, we're ready to move on to movie-specific rules. Starting with the film reel footage. Any time that a Super 8 film is played, that's a drink. For this rule, there was a total of 15 occurrences. The fifth rule is super simple. You take a drink whenever you hear Ellison's name. Ellison Oswald. Ellison. Ellison. Ellison? Have Ellison Oswald on. We only included instances when Ellison was said and not L. But you can choose to drink for both if you'd like. If you stick to our method, it will result in nine drinks. Looking at rule number six, it occurs 25 times in the film. The rule is any time the words Kentucky blood are said, Kentucky blood. Kentucky blood. Kentucky blood down. Kentucky blood. Or shown, you go ahead and take another sip. The rule that gave us the most drinks was any time that Bagul is shown or mentioned. We encountered him a total of 32 times. This included pictures of him, artwork involving him, in-person sightings, or alternate forms of him. Bear in mind that every time Mr. Boogie is shown or said, that is a reference to Bagul because he lives in the drawings. The final rule to our game is any time that Ellison reminisces about his glory days. This can mean he outright talks about his success with Kentucky Blood, I just need another hit, that's all. But also includes instances where he is simply watching old footage of interviews during his coming to fame. This rule only resulted in five drinks, but we felt it was important to include because it shows what he longs for as a character. And that wraps up all the rules for Sinister, giving us a grand total of 133 drinks which is the equivalent to approximately 4.5 standard 13 ounce cans. This number is based off of our 30 sips per can scale. So what are your overall thoughts about Sinister? I like the movie for the most part. The jump scares were a lot more effective than some other movies such as Dead Silence we just reviewed. The reason I think a lot of the jump scares are better is just because it has that overall dread feeling. So like for yeah. example, he's holding up the image outside and then he takes it away and then Bagul's suddenly there. Yeah. Creepy. I mean, some are cheap, like a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not many horror movies that use a box to scare you. <laughs> they do it in Sinister. I also think that the pacing in terms of drinking for this movie was a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of drinking involved, 
four and a half beers in one movie is quite a bit, but yeah. it was paced nicely that it didn't seem like we were drinking too much at one time, except for when they showed the Kentucky Blood <laughs> novels. <laughs> it's generally when they show Kentucky Blood, but they showed a Super 8 image. It's just a film and four deaths. Yeah, exactly. Part, so, so usually <laughs> whenever there's footage, it's a lot of death. Can I take a second to talk about how bad of a parent Ellison is? So Ellison lets his daughter draw on the wall. He's saying that he has intent of moving away, and I don't think that's going to have great resale value on the house if yeah. you're just drawing on the wall especially when it's just a picture of Bagul. And talking about that, you can see nobody cares about the daughter because nobody's in her room to see these drawings. Also, the children. Have you ever seen the codename kids next door? Yes. They look like the, the kids from down the lane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True, when they're all standing up yeah. at the end of the movie. At the end of the movie when they're all standing together, and like the, the, the tall one in the back. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. all it reminds me of. Can we take a second to talk about how dumb... Bagul looks. I think they could have made him look a little more scary or maybe not have shown him in such great detail and then it would have been more mysterious. <laughs> they also showed him a little bit too much throughout the course of the movie for something that's supposed to be like living in the drawing. Okay, deputy so-and-so. He's very in between being dumb but very good at his job. With deputy so-and-so, I think we get the vibe that he's dumb just because of how hard he's fat yeah. going over Ellison. He's he's just so awkward. He does find useful information. It's just oh, yeah. hidden behind the fact that he's such a... I don't know, he's kind of a goof. So adding on from the police department, how do they miss the box of tapes, the Super 8 films that were in the attic? Well. Yeah, at face value, it kind of seems like that's just such an easy miss that they made, but you gotta keep in mind that there is a supernatural aspect to the films, mm -hmm. because when Ellison burns them in the front yard, they reappear in his attic at his mm -hmm. old house, so there's some sort of supernatural aspect behind it, and maybe that's what hid it from the police when they were doing their investigation. And that leads us nicely to the award ceremony where we award one not-so-lucky nominee, the Darwin Award. This award goes out to the character who made a stupid decision that resulted in them getting killed, someone else getting killed, or simply resulting in something bad happening that could have easily been avoided. This award can also be given to a character who is just plain dumb. Here are our nominees. First, we want to nominate the entire police department of Kings County for their incompetence during the investigation of the hanging of the Stevenson's family. Considering the amount of information that Allison was able to uncover within a two-week span, with little to no resources that the police were not able to, makes them worthy of this nomination. Another thing that earns them a spot is when Allison calls 911, doesn't say a word, and then hangs up. They don't even try calling him back or dispatching emergency responders to make sure everything is okay. Our second and final nomination goes to Ellison Oswald. The reason for his nomination is because he moved into a house where a family was murdered and did not inform his family as if they would never find out. And when they do find out, his wife Tracy, understandably, gets a little pissed off, creating turmoil in their marriage. Not to mention the fact that moving into the house is the thing that got them killed in the end. Now that the nominations are out of the way, let's crown the real winner. Drum roll, please. And the winner is... Allison Oswald. As mentioned before, he moved his family into a murder house unwittingly and got him and his family killed, which could have possibly been prevented if he had answered deputy so-and-so's calls to inform him about the murder timeline, as opposed to ignoring them countless times. And with all that being said, we hope you enjoyed our look into Sinister. If you end up playing the game alongside the movie, or if you have any feedback or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss next week where we take a look into the Saw franchise. Starting May 7th and going until May 14th, we will be releasing every movie in the Saw series thus far in preparation for Spiral, the Book of Saw, in theaters May 14th. Thanks for tuning in, and this is us saying cheers, cheers. to fears. fears.